Let's try that again. We just attempted recording the triumphant return of stating the obvious. <laughs> we had a computer glitch, and by computer glitch, I mean I fucked up. I'm going to blame the computer, of course. <clears throat> it was Windows. Windows did it. It couldn't possibly be a me, no. I never make mistakes. No, of course not. I don't. What are you talking about? I do not make mistakes. You, How many years have you known me, Randy? Have I ever made a mistake? Exactly. Set name one time I've made a mistake. Yeah. Oh, you can scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, and motherfucking moan. Shove your opinion up your ass. That way Obama's cock has something to keep it company. <clears throat> and I'm going to try not to ride the microphone today. I'm going to try to do some good mic technique. Why? Because I am the great one himself. And this is Stating the Obvious Podcast. We have been on a little hiatus. But it, oh, I forgot to say because you are wrong and I am right. Shit, see, I haven't done this in two fucking months. I've been doing the Anarchy Moment podcast from the Cynical Libertarian Society, but this, this is the flagship. This is a, this is the weapons platform from which I launched a cruise missile of my intellect that homes in on and destroys stupid motherfuckers all over the world. Yes, I know. I know, Randy. I know. Yes, the microphone is pegging out. I see that. <laughs> I fucking see it. Don't shoot me. Don't fucking shoot me. Drop the input down a little bit. Oh shit! Too much gain on that motherfucker. Ah, oh, I. Ah, oh, it's like I'm on cocaine. Probably shouldn't say that because the NSA is listening. They'll think I'm serious. All right, bring the. Nah, see, that's too much down. What? No, I'm not pick. Not Nick pick. J up, 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 up. There we go. I like that better. I. Yes, I'll try to stay off the fucking microphone in the control room, telling me. How to do the mic technique is the lovely and adorable Randy. I am the great one himself. This is Stating the Obvious Podcast from the Cynical Libertarian Society. C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com on the internet. You can send us your love mail, your hate mail, your naked pictures, whatever the fuck you want to email to us. You can email that to God, the G-O-D, dog spelled backwards, God at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com. All right, I was out of state for a while there, doing some work, you know, generating value for other people, actually making money instead of receiving tax money and shit like that, things a lot of you wouldn't know anything about. And <laughs> I've, of course, been doing the Anarchy Moment podcast, started that up so I could get little things out here and there. And then I've been back catching up on this, catching up on that. Here we are. Here we fucking are. So as I was sitting down to do this, I was worried that I wasn't necessarily going to have enough material to talk about to fill up an episode of Stating the Obvious, which of course is the stupidest fucking concept I could ever come up with. Because you can't see this, but right behind me is a fucking pile on the floor. Literally on the floor, there is a pile of materials for me to talk about on this podcast on the floor that is at least eight fucking inches tall. And there's another goddamn pile on the desk over there that has dust on it that is, what is that, Randy? It's about four inches, about four inches tall. So I, like, the idea that I'm going to fucking run out of statism to fucking talk about is absurd. But somehow, sometimes I get these really dumb fucking ideas in my mind. What is today? Today is September the 9th, 2013. book. This book I just read. What, what am I reading right now? Am I reading anything? Oh, I'm reading. I'm not, I don't have it here. I can't remember the title. I think it's called Being Wrong. I'm going to talk about it some more in the future. It's really good. Also, I want to plug Confessions of an Online Hustler by Matt Forney. It's a book about blogging for money, making money on the internet. It is a fantastic book on that topic. Because it's no bullshit, it's direct, it's factual, it's to the point. It's written by somebody who actually makes money on the internet. It's not get rich quick. Like this other book I read that made me laugh my ass off. Alright, plug in that. Alright, now, this book. 
Why do I feel like I'm forgetting what I do? I did the website. I did the email. I did who we are. I did what the podcast is. I even did the date. I usually remember. Don't remember. I don't know what I'm saying. I can't talk. I usually don't remember to do the date. What am I forgetting, Randy? Uh huh. No, I think we. All right. Never mind. It's just my brain. My brain hurts. It's an atypical day here in Fort Collins. It was cloudy. It was overcast. It rained a little bit. I went out, took a little walk before Randy came over to the studio for the recording. It was really nice. I like this kind of weather. Have I? I have not recorded. Have I recorded stating the obvious since my bicycle got stolen? Somebody stole my bicycle from right in front of my apartment. It was locked up right next to my front door. Somebody cut the cable lock and stole my bicycle. Assholes. So far, the insurance company is coming through. Looks like I'm going to get reimbursed up to $2,700 to replace it because I had a very expensive mountain bike. It was also really old. I bought it in 1996. They stole it in the dark. They must have. I can only assume they stole it in the dark because if you looked at the bicycle in the daylight when you could actually see it, you would recognize it was not really in prime condition. But hey, it is what it is, right? All right. Get to some substance now that we're six fucking minutes into the podcast. Is there anything else I can delay before to keep us from getting into substance? All right, let's do it. <laughs> Donna, I, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. F R E I T A S. Fajitas, I don't know. She wrote this book called The End of Sex. Essentially, it's about the hookup culture among college kids. And it's written, as, as best I can gather, I haven't done a lot of research into her, but, well, she, all right, well, here, we, we can read on the, in the uh, book jacket, that's what that's called. Duh. Whew. See, you can tell I haven't done this in a while, I'm out of practice. She holds a PhD in religious studies from Catholic University. I guess there's actually a place called Catholic University. Not a Catholic University but Catholic University with capital letters. And so she somewhat comes at this perspective from a religious perspective, but it's not overly religious, which I think is a good thing because when I first got the book and I'm looking at it, oh, she's Catholic, yada, yada, yada. It's got to be sex is evil. Everybody's going to burn in hell, all this other shit. And so it wasn't. And it's, it's a good book. It's an easy read. I think it's really interesting. It's something you should probably check out. The basic premise here is that the kids these days in the colleges, you know, these kids these days, they're all hooking up and they're just having random sex. They're just having random sex. And essentially they're having sex without any kind of emotional attachment to it. It's essentially a mechanical thing. It's the, it's the hookup. You hook up with somebody, you fuck them one night, and then you go your separate ways. And that is essentially their sex life. And she's making the argument that this is not, in an emotional sense, you know, the healthiest way to go about doing these things. And the thing I like about the book is it's not over-moralizing. You know, it's not because, she, okay, PhD from a Catholic university, right? You would think she's going to be going, oh my God, you're having sex before you get married. You're going to burn in hell. And if you got an abortion, you're a murderer. You're going to burn in hell. And you're going to burn in hell. And if you have sex before you get married, unless you're a priest fucking an eight-year-old boy, you're going to burn in hell and burn in hell. And so it's not from that perspective at all. It's pretty reasoned and pretty rational, and she has, in the course of doing research for this and a previous book, she's done a lot of interviews with college students where she's talked to them about their sex life. And there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Like at one point, she comments that of the hundreds of students she interviewed, only one person ever referred to fucking as making love. And she you know, goes through just looking at their attitudes towards sex and how they think, well, hooking up is what I'm supposed to do. I'm not supposed to have a relationship. I'm just supposed to have sex with random people. And there's pressure to do that. And, you know, peer pressure, yada, 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 yada. I'm not going to summarize the entire book. There is some stuff I want to read, though. And I marked this off for me to read this in the podcast about three weeks ago. 
so I have actually no fucking clue. I don't remember why I'm reading this or what it's about. So I'm going to read this, and you and I are both going to be surprised at the same time. And after I've read it, hopefully I'm going to remember what the hell I wanted to say about it, because that's just how I roll, because I make shit up here as I go along, because I am that fucking good. Right, Randy? Because remember, name one time I've ever made a mistake. Okay, other than that time. Name one other. Okay, name another one other than that one. Name, yeah. No, that one doesn't, no, that one didn't count. Name, all right, name another one. No, all right, fine. Okay, name another time I've made, see, look at that. You can only name four times I've made a mistake. <laughs> right, because there's only 24 hours in a day. All right, let's do this. Instead of us fucking around, let's do this. Oh, that's hilarious. All right. <laughs> oh, God. Woo. Oh, this is funny. All right. Now, I, I already remember why I wanted to read this. Okay. Carrie Con Cronin, whoever. We're going to carry. Director of the Lungeren Institute of Boston at Boston College is doing her best to address this gap in education among students at her institution. Cronin... I don't know if that's how her name is pronounced. C-R-O-N-I-N. -N. That's not in the book. That's me talking. Or I'm going to say Cronin if I'm mispronouncing it. Sorry about that. Cronin has developed a model for dating. Now, as I read this, please, please keep in mind that we're talking about college students in the year 2013. We are talking about the smartest generation ever. We're talking about the future of America. These kids are going to college where they're getting this wonderful education that's going to allow them to go forth into the world and they're going to make so much money and they're going to change the world and they're so smart. Okay, as I go through this, remember, we are talking about the smartest generation ever. They've got Google, and they've got iPhones, and they have GPS, and they can text, and they are the smartest generation ever. Cronin has developed a model for dating that pairs in-class discussion with out-of-the-classroom life skills. In the spring of 2005, Cronin gave her students an unusual assignment in, one cre in a one-credit capstone seminar to go out on a date. What precipitated this assignment was a conversation with some seniors at BC who had informed her that they had never been on a date at college. She found this so unbelievable that she began polling other students with these three questions. Are you dating anyone? Have you ever? And if not, why not? Cronin quickly learned that the students were dying to talk about dating, even though most of them didn't have any dating experience. From these conversations, she found out that the dominance of the hookup culture on she found out about the dominance of the hookup culture on campus and learned that it was keeping students from getting to date. All right, let me break and editorialize because that's what I'm best at. By the way, did I I think I saw I could be wrong. God fucking help me. I hope I'm wrong. On YouTube, I saw a trailer for RoboCop 2013. Please, 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 fucking God that does not exist. Please come into existence. Fucking pull yourself out of nothing and manifest long enough to prevent a fucking remake of RoboCop. Is there nothing that is fucking sacred? You little fucking medicated generation shits have fucked up Star Trek. Now you're going to go fuck up RoboCop. 
Can you little fucking future of America, goddamn medicated generation, smartest generation, Google having fucking cell phone texting motherfuckers, can you please come up with a fucking original idea? Now, let's get back to making fun of you. These people have been through four years of college. Medicated generation, future of America, smartest generation ever, went to college, got educated, never been on a date because they're busy having drunken fucking hookups. And then, this is the thing, when you, when you see these people, speaking as a man, right, you look at these women, these girls, and you look at them, and, and see, here, here's the thing, so I live in a college town, for those of you who don't know it, Fort Collins, CSU, right, and so the college girls here, you know, they're all like, ew, you're old and creepy, it's like, yeah, but I can still fuck you, but, <laughs> okay, but the thing is, I, I know college girls, Not I know a lot of some of them personally, and I also know them just because I'm in the town with them, and I've had classes with them, and yada, 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 and they, they, I don't want to say all of them, that's generalization, but many of them, very a lot, you know, more than 50%, okay? Again, my definitions, when I use the term many, I, that is used to mean more than 50%, more than 50% of them look at themselves as this fantastic uh, catch, you know, this fantastic woman who's going to be a great wife someday and some man should really want her and she's so valuable and all this other shit. And it's like they don't realize that they're just fucking emotionally broken skanks. I encountered this woman recently and, you know, she, this, this is a really long story. I'm going to condense it. But her story is this. Right now, what she's doing is basically she's having sex with a different guy every two months, and she's terrified of commitment, and these relationships are very shallow. She meets them, there's a little small talk, and then they fuck a whole bunch, and then as soon as things start to get difficult, that's her own words, they drift apart. But what she wants out of life is to get married and have a happy, healthy relationship and marriage and all this other stuff. And it's like they don't understand and let me point out too either, I'm not saying that the men in the medicated generation, the boys rather, in the medicated generation are any better. I'm saying that I have no first-hand knowledge of that because I don't have sex with boys, nor do I care, okay? I'm giving the perspective of a heterosexual male about women because women are what I'm interested in. Everything I'm saying about the women, I have no doubt that the equivalency holds true for the men, all right? So for those of you out there just thinking, well, you're not saying anything about the boys. Well, that's because I don't give a fuck about the boys, okay? I see a 19-year-old girl in short shorts. I pay attention. I see a 19-year-old boy in short shorts. I don't fucking notice. I don't care. The boys wear short shorts. Oh, no, that's right. The boys have their fucking shit hanging down so you can see their goddamn underwear. All right, anyway, enough about boys' underwear. The women, these college girls, the ones that are in this book, the ones that I know, the ones that I've interacted with in real life, they're fucking broken. They're really fucking broken psychologically. And part of the reason they're broken is because they're in the hookup culture. And again, this is not saying that sex is bad. This is not saying that premarital sex is bad. This is not saying the reason these people are broken is because they're having sex. I'm going to be very fucking clear about that. It's not the part where they have sex that makes them broken. It's the part where they have random sex with whoever happens to be in the room with them when they're sufficiently drunk. And the fact that they go so far as to make sure they avoid emotional entanglements. And then as their life goes forward and they sit there and go like this chick I'm talking about, you know, well, I want to get married one day, but I'm terrified of commitments and I just want to fuck people for two months at a time. And when things start getting difficult, I bail out because I'm terrified of commitments, yada, yada, yada. Okay, you can't be fucking psychologically broken and fucked up and expect to have some kind of relationship. And you can't expect a man to see a woman like you, right, a woman who can't have, who has never had deep relationships, who, you know, says she's afraid of commitment, which is hilarious because women are always accusing men of being afraid of commitment. You know, to see a woman who's had, you know, 15, 20 different cocks inside of her, you can't expect a man who has a good job and a good future to look at a woman like that and be like, wow, I want to marry her. I mean, it's really fucking unrealistic. Because as a woman, you need to understand that there's a point where 
after a certain number of cocks have been inside of you, men are going to start losing interest real fast. Nobody's saying you can't have sex, you know, before you meet him. But it's like when you're, if you're 25 years old and you fucked 20 guys, that's kind of sketch. It's just a fact, honey. It's just a fact. Now, somewhere at a point. Oh, yeah, my point was, as I read this, remember, this is the medicated generation. This is the future of America. This is the smartest generation ever. They're all on medication for their personalities, and they've never been on dates. And they don't understand why us old people like me, you know, right, who had to walk 25 miles uphill to make a phone call, they don't understand why we look down our noses at them. It's because you're broken. All right, the same winter, Cronin and two women colleagues held a panel called Take Back the Date. An event that turned out to be standing room only. Cronin and her colleagues had diligently prepared to answer student questions on sexual ex that sexual ethics, moral reasoning, philosophical and theological attitudes about sex, and even the explicit how-tos of sex. But the types of questions from the packed auditorium were far more basic and innocent. Quote, how do you ask someone out? Unquote. Quote, where do you go on a date? And, quote, who pays? Now, these are the questions being asked of college professors by college students who are members of the smartest generation ever. They have Google, they have cell phones, they're on medication for their personalities, they're going to save the world, they're going to be rich when they graduate with their college diploma, you know, Obama is the Messiah, he's the president, he's going to give them free health care. And they're seriously asking questions like, how do you ask someone out? Where do you go on a date? For those of you out there under the age of 30, there's a reason why I think you're stupid. This is it, right here. Now, in a way, this is good news because what this tells me is that college girls that I am surrounded by are stupider and more gullible and easier to fuck than I ever thought they were. And th this is honest truth. I mean, reading this book has made me realize that these girls are even less intelligent than I thought they were to begin with, and I didn't give them a lot of credit for intelligence to begin with. If anything, th you know, now this is counterbalanced, of course, by the fact that they're a bunch of left-wing statist feminazis, but honestly, in the long run, this kind of just pure fucking stupidity should make it easier than ever to fuck the little bitches. So for those of you who live in college towns and like fucking college girls, I mean, take this as a positive thing. They're dumber than you think you th 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 They're dumber than you think they are. And the only thing better than a hot chick with low self-esteem is a stupid hot chick with low self-esteem from a purely sexual perspective, of course. Now, of course, you're not going to have a relationship with any of these women. I mean, who the fuck is going to want to marry a woman who doesn't know where you go on a date? And then they're all going to wonder why they're old and they're living with their 73 cats and they've never been married before. The following semester, Cronin told her 11 seminar students she wanted them to go out on a date. The assignment was not mandatory at this stage. Quote, they all agreed to do it, and they talked about it all semester. The assignment itself, how to ask someone out, etc. But in the end, and after all the talk, only one person, one, got up the courage to actually go on a date. The rest chickened out. The anxieties they expressed about why ranged from 
people are going to think I'm strange to I can't think of anybody I would like or would want to ask out. I kept thinking this is a college with 9,000 undergraduates. How many people do you need? You really can't find anyone you'd like to go for coffee with." Unquote. All of that was a quote from Cronin who teaches the classes. Let me, let me read this quote. This is what she is saying about her students. This is, they, the rest chickened out. The anxieties they expressed about why ranged from, people are going to think I'm strange. As I've said a million times before, women, especially young ones, but all of them, are primarily driven by what other people will think about them. The medicated generation, the smartest generation ever, the female members of the smartest generation ever, are fucking terrified to go on a date because other people might think they're strange. Guess what, you stupid bitch? Other people think you're a motherfucking loser. And when you're old and dying with your 73 cats and there's nobody else around you, you're going to fucking maybe... Yeah, you actually, you won't regret it. You won't regret it because you won't know any better. I can't think of anybody I would like or would want to ask out. This, this is a huge problem with the young females. As she points out, you're on a college campus. Really? You, <laughs> I just said really. There's a great, Mad Maddox did a great video about how really is not a punchline. <laughs> now every time I say the word really, I think about that. Oh, God. is hilarious. Maddox also did a great video about how fucking cheese pizza is not really pizza. It's just bread with cheese on it and about how pepperoni is a disgusting topping and if you, all you order is cheese pizzas and pepperoni pizzas maybe you're a fucking loser that needs to get a little more imagination or you're a member of the medicated generation all right anyway i mean this is a great point how can you be a student on a fucking college campus and not be able to find anybody that you want to go drink a cup of coffee with them and just talk to them I mean, how much of a goddamn... Th this is either these women are incredible fucking losers or the other thing I find with women, especially, you know, younger women, under 30, medicated generation, future of America women, great, smartest generation ever women. The thing I find with these women is their standards are so mind-blowingly high for what they expect from a man and yet... I'm losing my place in the book. They offer absolutely nothing. I mean, think about it. A woman who doesn't know how to ask somebody on a date. A woman who doesn't know, you know, where you go on a date. I mean, how can a woman that stupid, I should say a girl, how can a girl that stupid have expectations for a man? I mean, she is bringing nothing to the table with her. Her expectations for a man that would stick his cock inside of her need to be really fucking low. I mean really fucking low. I was on college CSU campus for eight years working there and taking classes. I could find people I wanted to date pretty much on I mean all the time. I was surrounded by them. There's thousands of people there. And not all of them are stupid. Not all of them are you know, the kind of morons I'm talking about right now. Yes, most. Over 50% of college girls fall into the category that I'm talking about, but not all of them do. I could find plenty of women to date. Fuck. Oh, wait. I'm not medicated. I'm not the smartest generation ever. I, it takes me a long time to send a text because I don't know how to do that shit with my thumb. I actually talk to people with my fucking voice in person face to face looking at them in the eye which the other which uh, anyway don't get me started on that <laughs> all right what am I am I still reading this yes the inability to act on the desire to go on a date went beyond fear for Cronin students hookup culture was so overwhelming that they couldn't get out from under the hookup script as she put it dating was so outside the norm that her students had no idea how to set up a date in such an environment. That's when Cronin decided to make the dating assignment mandatory, as it's been ever since. <sighs> 
smartest generation ever. I'm fairly speechless. And as those of you who listen to Staying the Obvious know, that doesn't happen a lot. I'm going to keep reading. At the very beginning of the third semester, after she, that she assigned the date, I stipulated that students could not pass the class unless they did the dating assignment, Cronin said. By then, people were signing up knowing this would be the assignment, and some admitted taking my seminar solely because of it, that they knew, excuse me, they knew they needed someone to force them to go on a date, or they never would. Okay, today, Cronin's... I am fucking speechless. I mean, fucking hell. All right, and you know what? Here's... And, and let's... I'm, I'm ragging on the women. Again, why? Because I'm a man. I'm interested in fucking women. Let's, let's make sure we spread this around. So all these little fucking future of America's smartest generation ever cunts have never been on a date before. Okay. Where are the boys at? Uh, you boys, college students, boys, where the fuck are you? Do you not have the balls to ask chicks out on dates? So you have balls to get them drunk and fuck them once and never speak to them again. That's what passes for being a man in the medicated generation. That, that's, again, women, the women in the medicated generation, that's the pool you have to choose from. Is a bunch of fucking boys who don't have the balls or the intelligence or the wherewithal to ask chick, hey, you want to go get coffee? Hey, you want to go get a beer? And to maybe get the beer and not fuck her that night and then never speak to her again. That's the pool you have to choose from when you finally, you know, start getting old and you decide, oh, I need a husband because I'm 40 and I'm unmarried. And you start getting desperate. And by that time, all the good men in your age range, because that's, you know, again, age discrimination, totally okay. So you're going to be picking from men in your age range. By that time, the men in your age range who are good, who have value, they're going to be marrying some chick who's 20 years younger than them. So you're going to lose that. You are going to get what is going to be available to you women right now who are 20 years old. What is going to be available to you in 20 years from now as far as men go is going to be the absolute fucking scum of the earth. Is These are going to be the most despicable pieces of so-called male real estate ever. These are going to be the most ballless, soulless, nutless, spineless, pussy-whooped, beta male motherfuckers that have ever walked the earth. And you're probably not going to want that. And you know what? I can't blame you. So, As I'm sitting here reading this and making fun of all these girls for being like this, you know, the boys in the smartest generation ever are not exactly fucking stepping up to the plate. Not stepping up at all. And again, if you're over the age of 30 and you live near a college campus, this is good news for you. Because all those girls, hey, you, you could take them out and just buy them a cup of coffee. And this is going to be beyond anything they've experienced. you would be able to fuck them for days. Because they have no, again, not all of them, but a vast majority of them have no experience with having a member of the male sex treat them apparently with any kind of romantic serious interest. I mean, apparently it's, it's just get them drunk and fuck them and never talk to them again. So you can blow their tiny little fucking brains and get them to blow your cock. 
All right. Today, Cronin's go-on-a-date assignment has quite a reputation at Boston College. She has developed extensive written directions over the years to go with it. Let's let that sink in for a moment. Extensive written directions to go on a date for the smartest generation ever. Not only has the class become more popular with every semester, but the date, a la Professor Cronin, has acquired a certain aura among undergraduates at BC. Everyone seems to know about it, even students who have not been in the class. By the fifth or sixth semester that I taught the class, there wasn't anyone on campus who hadn't heard of the assignment, said Cronin. Eventually, people who weren't even in the semester started to do it, too. People started telling me how they really relied on the assignment to justify asking someone out. It was typical for students to actually mention they were required to go on a date for the class while asking the person out. Because so many people on campus already knew about it, it was, much, it was that much easier to do the asking." Unquote. During one semester, Cronin recalled a young man became invested in how to make the asking out part of the assignment more manageable and authentic. So he came up with phrasing to accommodate both needs and shared it with his peers. Quote, I have this assignment to go out on a date, but I've been wanting to ask you out for a long time anyway." Unquote. This allowed students to use the assignment as a crutch and as a legitimate invitation to go on a date. What he should have added was, I have this assignment to go out on a date, but I've been wanting to ask you out for a long time anyway, but I'm on medication for my personality, and as part of the side effects of that medication, it's completely shrank my fucking balls so that they're so goddamn tiny, I was not able to find them so as to ask you if, I, if you would go out on a date with me, which is kind of good because I don't actually know where to go on a date anyway, because I have no fucking class, no fucking manners, no fucking balls, and I'm a member of the smartest generation ever. Oh my god, like totally friend me on Facebook. But asking someone out isn't the only struggle Cronin's students have faced. Over the years, she has tweaked her assignment sheet by adding a few requirements to make the dating experience more legitimate. Highlights in the assignment include, I was not originally intending to read this far, but I cannot resist. I'm going to stop after this. All right, here are here are the criteria. Here's some of the criteria. You must ask someone out in person, not in a text message, Facebook, or IM. This person must be someone who is a legitimate romantic interest, not just a friend. Do not go to a movie on the first date. A movie is at odds with the aim of a first date, which is to get to know the other person through conversation. If you have to tell them that, are they really the smartest generation ever? The date may be a daytime or nighttime date, but the date must occur before 10 p.m. A walk around the reservoir at midnight or later is not a date, it's sketchy, or it's the beginning of a hookup. And the date must involve no alcohol. But that's a killer because these medicated generations, they mean they can't deal with other humans without their drugs, whether it's their personality medication, whether it's their alcohol, whether it's their marijuana, whatever it is. When they don't have their drugs, they, they just can't cope. Now, what is the other thing I wanted to read out of this book? I'm going to stop. I could, I could probably keep going forever. Oh, yes. Here we go. In the appendix... 
there's a section called on the practical concrete ways to respond to hookup culture and this is this is for the old people this is for those of us who walked uphill 25 miles this is things we can do to help alleviate the hookup culture fix the hookup culture whatever the fuck you want to call it there's a part for parents who gives a fuck but th this part is hilarious things administrators and staff members can do okay during admission tours and conversations address the dating climate on campus during freshman orientation have juniors and seniors who are helping out give talks on their favorite dates and most romantic evenings consider sponsoring a top 10 romantic spots on campus tour or a top 10 plus places to take a date tour this is so fucking corny this is what you have to do to get the medicated generation to understand how to date talking to another person and getting to know them before you stick your cock inside them humans have been doing this for millions of years and yet the medicated generation the smartest generation ever they need help to figure this out they need the administrators and staff of the college to fucking tell them the top 10 places on campus to take a date and what would, would be the roman top 10 romantic places on campus what the fuck kind of campus are you on college campus i've seen does not have romantic spots on it all right anyway spot sponsor a panel on dating tips and etiquette sponsor a program called can we kiss that is actually about how to get that first kiss and not about sexual assault which actually is, is not too bad of an idea because all of the information incoming freshmen get on a college campus again remember I was on a college campus for eight years I've seen this with my own eyes all the information they get as incoming 18 year old kids who are on medication and don't know their ass from a hole in the ground is that if you have sex with another person without having them filled out the forms and given consent seven different ways and all this other shit is that it's rape and you're evil and the, you know the police are going to come for you and you're a bad person the only part they leave out is the part about burning in hell but certainly if you have sex with a woman you're a bad person you know and women are told if somebody's trying to have sex with you he's trying to rape you and you need to call the cops so giving them some sort of information when they come to college that doesn't involve the idea that all sex is rape would actually not be a bad idea foster programs where students have to go on a date like date night at the at the on campus coffee shop and include a gift card for two coffees so students don't have to worry about the cost I have news for you students have plenty of fucking money for beer okay again I live a block and a half from a college campus live in a college town that college students here have no problem getting money for beer and weed they do not need fucking free coffee to go on a date dude make make fucking coffee at home make some coffee in your fucking dorm room it's a fucking coffee pot. you can get the coffee pot you can go down to the motherfucking student center or the quad find an outlet plug in the coffee pot pour the water put the coffee in. you can make the coffee right there on the quad if you do it right that could actually be a little bit classy and romantic fucking google for it or something i don't know come on guys take advantage of the growing population of students who do volunteer and social justice work on campus empowering them to take social justice ideals and apply them to their after dark and weekend partying activities I don't think it's a problem all those social justice people are feminist and I think they're doing that already all right anyhow that is that's all I'm gonna read from that book I could spend probably days on that What's next on this show? Randy, how are we on time? Hold on, let me move the microphone. All right. Meanwhile, <laughs> in the local news, <laughs> uh, 
So when I said I was worried I didn't have enough for a whole episode, because I knew I wanted to talk about the book, but not anything else. I didn't have anything else on mind. So I went to the, the good old internet, went to the Colorado one website, find out some stuff. So here's a here's couple little tidbits for you statists out there. Denver. Hundreds of people are lining up in a Denver park to get a free marijuana cigarette as part of a protest against a plan to impose high taxes on the drug, which is now legal in Colorado for recreational use. Little Tree Opie is one of the two people handing out cigarettes Monday at Civic Center Park. Opie says she is protesting the proposed tax because people who can't afford to pay would be forced to go to the black market. Gulf War veteran Randy Note says he suffers traumatic brain injury and qualifies for marijuana under Colorado. I'm going to be editorializing in a minute. I'm trying to hold off. <laughs> Under Colorado's medical marijuana law, he should, he says he showed up for a marijuana cigarette to show his support for the campaign to defeat a ballot measure that would impose high taxes. Okay, first of all, Gulf War veteran Randy notes, well, you're a fucking veteran with your fucking traumatic brain injury because of the goddamn government. Well, fuck you, right? You voted for Obama. You support the government. You got what you fucking deserved. Shut the fuck up. Little Tree Opie. They, people who can't afford the taxes have to go to the black market. Oh my God. Well, guess what, people? Of course the fucking got. I told... When marijuana legalization happened here in Colorado, I tried to explain this to you stupid motherfuckers, but hey, as usual, nobody will fucking listen because everybody thinks they have all the fucking answers. And nobody will fucking listen. The reason marijuana was made legal was so that they could tax it. This is the whole argument that the legalization of marijuana advocates have been making for all these years. Why, we should legalize marijuana because we could tax it and pay off all these debts and buy it for education and all that. Well, duh. I mean, did you really, do you people, are you fucking statist? Really? This goddamn stupid? That you thought the government was going to legalize marijuana and not impose taxes on it? I mean, are you really that stupid? I need to know. Did you really fucking believe that? I said this over and over and over. Of course they're going to tax the shit out of it. Of course they're going to regulate the shit out of it. Of course there's still going to be a black market, just like there's a black market for alcohol. Why? Because if you're under 21, you can't buy alcohol. There's a whole black market out there geared at providing alcohol for people under 21. If you can only have three plants and you can only have one ounce and you can, you know, you have to pay these taxes, of course there's going to be a black market, you dumb fucking stupid bitch named Little Tree Opie. What in the fuck was going through your tiny little fucking medicated generation brain? Why are you fucking statist so fucking stupid. Of course the government is going to fucking tax it. Of course the taxes are going to be high. <sighs> fucking Christ. Fucking Jesus. Fucking H. Christ on a fucking stick. Meanwhile, Jared Polis, who is a congressman from Colorado, I, I don't know if he's a Republican or a Democrat, I don't give a shit, but you know, he, he has a column in the thing today where he's talking about how he has reviewed the classified materials about Syria, yada, 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 and he says, nothing I have seen or heard has changed my opinion. I plan to oppose military action in Syria. Yes, I'm sure you do, fuckhead Polis, but you're not going to oppose it enough 
to fucking stop funding the military or you're not going to oppose it enough to fucking impeach Obama because his nutsack is in your mouth. So shut the fuck up, Jared Polis. Okay? Just shut the fuck up. Meanwhile, the Timberline Church has bought the building in which the Hunt Club resides. For those of you not from Fort Collins, that means nothing to you. The Hunt Club is our only, what, what I call a titty bar, what some people call a strip club in Fort Collins. I thought this was just hilarious, and I actually found out about this before the news broke. I wanted to get to the internet so bad, and like, oh, guess what, everybody? I just found out that the Timberland Church has bought the Hunt Club. I didn't, the newspaper got it out first. Boo. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, it's, I mean, it's kind of funny. Church buys the strip club. They're shutting it down to make a church. They're going to put a church in what used to be a strip club. That's good shit. All right, and now I'm running out of time. Oh, and then we got this. Shit, I don't have time for this stupid fucking cunt and her fucking whining. Oh, all right, well, now we know it. Actually, yes, Randy, I can do her and I can do Hummer Boy in the next episode. It's perfect. It'll be perfect. It'd be like a two-banger. Yes, almost like a three-way. All right. Wow, it's getting kind of dark outside cloudy all right so yeah we're we're creeping up on the end of the episode I'm trying to think what other kind of good stuff i got i recorded a anarchy moment today where i just lost my mind after listening to stefan molyneux in a debate with some incredibly stupid people i am so so losing my patience for idiots and i i am so surrounded by idiots they call themselves statist. I, well, I call them statist. Excuse me. They call themselves sane, rational, civilized people who, of course, believe in murdering anybody who doesn't agree with them and think that it's okay to kill brown people in foreign countries with flying robots if you're black and you live in a White House. So they're actually very, very sick, psychopathic, really mentally fucked up pieces of shit. But they think they're normal. I think they're status. They scare the shit out of me. I'm getting really sick and tired of them. Not sure how much more I'm going to be able to take before I just fucking lose my mind and go live in a cave up somewhere in the fucking mountains or something. But anyhow, that's wrapping up this episode of Stating the Obvious. I welcome myself back. Thank you, Internet. Thank you, listeners. Here we are. I don't bother with the other side. It's called the non-aggression principle. It's right. It's not that fucking complicated. It just means you might have to get off your ass, put down the fucking welfare check, stop killing other people, and actually work for something in your life. Fuck you. See me get up and walk into that wall. That was awesome. <laughs> hey Randy, there's a wall over there. <laughs>